Hi, I'm Todd Vanderwill. I'm Steve Stricker. I'm Alex Bainey. And we are members of the Fulton County Leadership Academy, Class of 2023. Our project is to profile three local nonprofits. I chose to profile the Outlet Youth Center. Um, Patience Heise, who manages the center, came and presented to our group in the fall and their mission to help uh, young people give them a safe space after school. Um, I was very interested in that as I work at in the business office at Rochester Community Schools. Um, please see the following video to learn more about their group. Um, we are at the Outlet Youth Center today to learn about their operations with us is Patience, Patience. Uh -huh. and yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> and Taylor, they're going to tell us about the operations out here and um, other information that is uh, interesting uh, about the uh, organization. So, how did the Outlet Center? How did the Outlet Youth Center? How did that become a? How did that become in existence? What was the? Who's, whose idea was it, how, what were the steps that were taken? Okay, so um, in 2018, a group of people um, that had the idea for a youth center kind of came together um, and they met and they talked and they brainstormed and that happened for a few months. Um, and it was decided then that everyone was gonna actually attempt it. The, it had been attempted a few mm -hmm. times previously, but it didn't really take off, but this, felt like the right time for them. Um, so they formed a board. And from that board in 2019, they secured funding for three years of operational costs. They found a building for us downtown mm -hmm. um, at 6th and May. And then we got our nonprofit status in December of 2019. So it all happened very quickly. Um, and to get your nonprofit status the first time you apply, it's definitely kind of a God thing because it is a little more difficult to get. Um, so I started part-time as the executive director in January of 2020, and we started renovating our space out there. Um, we had to add bathrooms, put up some walls, build an office, a kitchen. All sort of a kitchen. Um, so that took us, our plan in January was to open in March. Um, but as you probably recall, that's when the whole world shut down. So Hard we, to forget that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we um, we kind of turned a little bit and decided we still wanted to help kids, even though they couldn't be in the building. So we did snack bags, and we handed those out in Akron, Fulton, Kiwana, and in Rochester. Um, and in those, they had like five snacks and two microwavable meals that they could have uh, because the school was handing out meals for five days. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we would try and cover a couple of the other days for them. And we ended up giving out over 5,000 snack bags over a course of, I think we started in April and we stopped the end of June. Um, and then we had our ribbon cutting in August of 2020. And since then, we have grown exponentially. I mean, it has just kind of exploded. We started out with our after school program, um, which meets Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday after school until 530. And then in October of 2020, we added our preschool book club. Um, it initially started with an idea from a couple members of the Lions Club. Um, they really wanted to work with youth and literacy, and so the idea was born to have preschool age kids come in and ex have stories read to them. Um, they had a snack, a craft, and then we always did music with them. Um, and we, we, when the schools closed down in 2020 and 2021, we offered a space for students to come with internet. Mm -hmm. um, RTC was amazing enough to bump our internet so we could have multiple kids doing things at the school, or at the center. And then we started our Fridays at the Park, summer of 20. 20, was it? No, 2021. Yeah, summer of 2021 where we met at Manitou Mountain for a couple of hours on Friday afternoons and it was open to the whole community. We did crafts and games and we always had ice cream sundaes. That was the biggest hit of Fridays at the Park. And we've gone from maybe four or five after school students to 
21-22 school year, we averaged between 15 and 25 kids. And towards the end of 2022 school year, we were up to 35. We had a day we had 50 kids. Yeah. And if you're familiar with the space that we were in, Taylor likes to say it was like having a bunch of pterodactyls screaming <laughs> around our head with 50 kids. Um, so you want to share how this place came about? Yeah. So um, we clearly were outgrowing our building. Sure. Amazing problem to have. So uh, we had some connections in town. I mean, we looked at so many different buildings. Yeah. We looked at some houses, maybe we could do this in a house, maybe we could. It just didn't work. We, I mean, roadblock after roadblock. So uh, we said, okay, this is the building we're gonna be in. Uh, we think we can grow here. Um, if we can maybe get the back part, we didn't have the back part of the building at the time. Um, we talked about buying the building instead of renting, um, but the building was gonna get a little bit of work for it to um, meet what we needed to for growth. So we had accepted that, we were excited, and we moved on. Um, but the biggest problem of the building was uh, we needed help with the roof. So we um, had made a connection with an amazing uh, couple who were from Rochester, and they said, you know what, we believe in you, we believe in your mission. Let us gift you a down payment for this building. And then we're going to slowly help you raise money to fix what needs fixed in the building. We're like, okay, amazing. Wonderful. Um, that was on a Tuesday morning. That afternoon, um, we had gotten a call from the Community Foundation that Rex and Chris Robinson and Matt Sutton were interested in gifting us Schnabel Tier. So a couple weeks prior, we had met with them. They had been supporters of us from the beginning. And uh, we just met with them to say, hey, thank you so much. Here's what we've been able to do with what you've given us. Um, that's all the meeting was. And they kind of asked what some of our challenges were. And they, they came up with 20 ideas for us. And we had tried all of them. So uh, when we left, Rex jokingly said, well, they could run around in the, in the, uh, the warehouse at Schnabel Tier. We kind of laughed and said, yeah. So a couple weeks later on that same day, they called and said, we want to gift to you Schnabel Tier. And what? We said, um, excuse me, <laughs> for real? So we said, okay, get over that shock, and then think that will work, but the only problem is going to be getting kids here, because mm -hmm. it's not very walkable. So we called these people back who had offered to gift us a down payment, and they said they would use that money instead to purchase us a 15-passenger van. So that was all in one day, yeah. and... Uh, yeah, it's been pretty amazing. Since moving here, um, obviously our space grew about, I mean, 10 times mm -hmm. what oh, we yeah. had. And we obviously have grass now, and the kids absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. um, we have transportation to and from school. Mm -hmm. We have added, we will be adding in the fall of this year, um, we'll be open four days a week now. So we'll go, we'll add Mondays to it, and our Fifth quarters will pick back up after home football games. We'll mm -hmm. bring the high schoolers over here to hang out until yeah. 1130. It's, it's just, we've been able to expand what we had planned for 10 years in the future to do now, mm -hmm. which is really cool. That is, that is cool. That's probably my, that's my next question. You're, you're, you know, how do you see your programming um, growing, expanding, changing in the next you know, three, five, three to five years, 10 yeah. years? Well, the main thing, we have a lot of things, but the main thing we want to do is to reach out to the other schools in Fulton County. Let's get casting kids in here mm -hmm. and Valley kids in here. Um, I think casting is kind of the next, yeah. the next step. Um, we've already got some buses that come to Rochester anyway, hopefully can drop kids off here. Um, we just need to get in the schools and we've made some connections with the, um, the guidance counselors, but that's definitely one of our biggest goals. That's, and then we also want to bring more um, college and career readiness into okay. our programming. Because during our after school program, we offer the usual snacks and just a comfortable and safe place for the students to land. Um, but we also have clubs. So we do art club, 
STEM club. Um, we have a grub club through Purdue Extension where the kids learn how to cook. We have chess club with Doug Morton who comes in every Wednesday and hangs out with the kids. And our idea is to expand that to include um, some businesses coming in and doing some career readiness and some college preparedness for our students. Um, we mostly deal with middle and high schoolers. Um, and a lot, probably most of them are middle schoolers right now, eighth grade, mm -hmm. getting ready to move on to the high school. But I think it's time and our community needs that for our kids. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. We just applied for a big Lilly grant that will hopefully allow us to do that. Um, we've also added the sports locker. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it is gently used equipment um, that parents can come and get for their students. So then the students can have the opportunity to do rec sports. Oh, that's, yeah. that's awfully helpful. Yeah. So we started that this season with softball and baseball, and it's gone really well. We've probably had 30 families come in and get things that they needed. So it saves them a little money, but still provides an opportunity for the student, which is our mission. Yeah, and the programming is gonna look different as we progress, but the goal is to just meet and meet and meet the needs of more and more kids in Polk County. So I assume that you guys have uh, discussions about that probably rather frequently probably, you know, to, 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 to stay on task to meet the needs of, mm -hmm. of the kids and, and adjust to those because I mean, we all know that kids are, <laughs> that the, the only constant with the kids is change. So, uh -huh. um, it is. What kind of, uh, what things have the community, has the community been able to help you with, which you have expanded on some of it, um, and what things could the community help with going forward? So we are 100% funded by donations. Um, it allows me to work here full time and we are bringing on someone to work um, three quarters time. Mm -hmm. um, and the community has supported us thus far and it's been absolutely amazing. We've had um, several businesses step up and come beside us. Um, a lot of community members have come beside us and I think it's time now to take the next step, which in order to provide more services to the students and to have the staff that we need to serve the students and their families, yeah. it's gonna take more finances mm -hmm. for Every, us to be able. Everything we offer is free, yeah. everything. That was, I think, the number one goal from the beginning. Yep. Uh, and we wanted to keep it that way. So um, that's been big. We've also had some, uh, uh, Businesses do some drives for us. Um, the kids love, not love, they need hoodies. <laughs> so we had somebody donate us a bunch of hoodies. And some businesses have brought in snacks and they've come and they've served dinner and just hung out with the kids. And they've uh, donated paper products oh, and yeah. socks. And I mean, just those tangible needs are important too. We, off we offer a community assistance to our students as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so any student that regularly attends our programming, if they need a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. if they need glasses, if they need a new hoodie, because you know they can't wear coats, because sure. that's against the law in middle school. Um, <laughs> if their family is going through a hard time and need their refrigerator filled, we take care of those things for our students. So then our kids can focus on what's the most important, which is their family and learning. Sure. Um, so that obviously with more students coming here, that will increase as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's just another um, avenue in the community for, for that kind of assistance. Yeah. And I don't know in this day and age if, you can, if there can be enough of that. Right. Um, Agreed. Yeah. And the school counselors have also, we've gotten them to do it yeah. now. Um, right. But if they have a student that needs something, they call us and we usually have it there that day. Um, one counselor called and said, I have a family who needs socks and underwear. I said, okay, send me sizes and I'm on my way. So um, we'll fill all of that stuff. It's good that you can have those, those relationships because that's mm -hmm. ultimately how you can the best serve right. yep. the kids and their families. And, and we, sometimes we just don't know about it unless we're told. And the counselors, they tend to have a good insight on yeah. what's going on, who needs what, and how to yeah. do it the, the, the yeah. best way to, to, to make those kids you know, help them get whatever their needs are. 
Is there anything else you would like to add? I'm trying to come up with questions. They, you did a really good job of not beating uh, the cue too much, honestly. <laughs> We love sharing our story with the community and we have noticed that because of COVID and when we opened and a lot more people know about us now because of the move, because mm -hmm. that was a very big announcement and a community, it had a huge community impact. Um, but there are still people out there that don't know us and don't know what we do. And so it's really amazing that we are given the opportunity to do interviews like this to share the story of who we are and what we do and just to put out there that it's a hundred percent donations mm -hmm. that runs us and so getting more people on board to and businesses to just help us further this mission is amazing um, we were able to start an endowment this year mm -hmm. at the Fulton County Community Foundation and that is amazing that means the more we build that up um, we can make sure that this is not going to leave, mm -hmm. that it, it is sustainable and it will stay here in the future.